Welcome back to the biggest agricultural platform in Namibia known as Nduna Wengombe, which means headman of cattle. My name, of course, uh, is Mitchell Butubasibate, aka the headman of cattle. I have been stricken down with a, with a illness, a cold, wet cough. It still has me as we speak right now. It's getting a bit better, but, you know, I said that last that I had a dream. I was dreaming that I got offered the job at African Farming, and I was like, Blexum. That's where I want to go. Or a company, no, 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 not African farming. A company came on board and sponsored this channel. And we grew, and I grew this channel to the level of African farming. So because of that, I had to just muster up the courage to come back and do another video on this Monday, which I usually shoot on a Sunday, but today is Monday. So I'm shooting on a Monday on the 4th of July. Happy new month, guys. Hopefully July will be much more come will be much more nicer to us than what June was, eh? So let's get into the video of um, of this uh, cultivar that I want to talk about, which is soya beans. As you guys know, I'm never writing soya like I my trusted notebook. So let's get into soya bean production. I tried to get information on Namibia, but unfortunately I wasn't, so I got information on South Africa. I hope, I think it might be relevant also here. We could use it this side. So let's get into soya bean production. Soya bean production in South Africa currently ranges from four. Uh, 450,000 tons to 500,000 tons per year at an average yieldage of about uh, 2.5 uh, tons, 5 to 3 tons a hectare under dry land condition. Out of all three provinces, Mpumalanga appears to be one of the appears to be one of the of the biggest producers, with the largest quota of soya beans about 42 percent of the soya beans. The free state produces 22 percent of the total harvest while KwaZulu-Natal produces 15 percent, Lompopo 8 percent, the Northwest 5 percent. So that's how they go. Lompomalanga is king. Then you have your free state. Then you have KwaZulu. Then you have Lompopo. And then you have Northwest. And then Gauteng is at the bottom of 2 percent. The cultivars. Soya bean cultivars are area specific, meaning you they can only grow in particular areas. With re with regard to optimal adaptation, the duration of planting to maturing should approximately be 100 to 20, 100 to 20 days or 130 days. For well-adapted cultivars, where cultivars, where cultivars are planted at higher altitudes or latitudes, latitudes then recommended, the growth period will be longer. So if you're planting in, in above sea level, I don't know how many high above sea level, it might take longer. There are several determining cultivars in South Africa with suitable, with, with, which are suitable, differing according to regions and province. The cultivars also differ in their resistance to disease, stress, stressful weather conditions, and other factors that affect production. Cultivars that are cultivars with a relatively long growing season should be recommended should be recommended when planting soya when planting soya for fodder. So if you're planting soya to produce feeds for livestock, utilize the ones which have a long growing period. Where much emphasis should be placed on vegetative growth. Rather growth rather than grain production. The seeds can be purchased from registered seed suppliers in, in South Africa. Now we talk about the soya beans, mature plants. Soya beans, soya bean growth for seed production is an annual is an annual leguminous warm temperature short plant normally bushy can be normally bushy erected which it stands up straight erected usually the plant's height differs from 40 centimeters to 100 centimeters from the ground up plants are much are much branched with well developed roots and each plant produces a number of small pods containing one to four round seeds. Uh, round seeds, usually yellow to black in color. They could be yellow or black. It has a, a round hairy. It has a round hairy stem with a branch, and is and it is usually differs in color according to the type of uh, soil you've planted. The plants are are determined, are categorized, are categorized in into determined or indetermined types the determined types are sh are short and are short and are, uh, are short in term and have a termite growth meaning they grow upwards um, with the onset of flowering and the growth tips and the growth tips end in pot bearing 
and in pot bearing plants. The, the harvesting can be done in one, in one round because the, all the pods ripen at the same time. So this one you can harvest at the same time. It's not like you have to, you just, if you have them in a field, you harvest at the same time. The indeterminate type grows to a height of about 70 centimeters. The other one is about, uh, da, da, da. do I have numbers for it? Okay, this one grows about 70 centimeters in height. And they, con uh, they continue to grow vegetative with flowering, with flowering and, a for and forming of pods resulting in seeds or pods of different sizes that require manual harvesting at different times. So the determined one ripens at the same time. The indeterminate one ripens at different times. So that's the problem you're going to have. So that helps you pick. But if you're going to um, produce soya for feed, rather get the indeterminate one because it produces more greenery. Then you have roots. The root system is extensive with a tap root that may exceed 1.5 meters in length. The tap root has lateral roots that uh, with that grow lateral and grow with a soil uh, depth of about 30 meters. So it goes 30, 300 millimeters down. Sorry, not 30, 300 millimeters down into the ground. The roots have tiny bumps on them. Lumps which contain a specific, a special a species specific strain of rhizobium bacteria that causes plants to fix the nitrogen to the soil independently the lateral root uh, bumps are more important during flowering and uh, during flowering and seed and seed formation so if you're farming in an area where your soil has a nitrogen problem consider planting soya because it can help fix the nitrogen problems so the flowering of the soya. The flowers that the one soya bush can grow about to, uh, can grow about twenty small purple or white flowers. They usually they can uh, either self pollinate or you can utilize bees. But if you don't have bees, don't worry, they can do it themselves. Um, agent, which the bees, uh, uh, be with the bees. So you can use the bees as a pollinating agent. Produ pr production of soya bean hybrid since it has been proven that bees can increase seed yieldage by 20%. So if you don't have bees, it can pollinate itself. But if you utilize the bees, the bees help increase the pollination level to about 20%. So those are things that you can look at. Fruits. The fruits are short, hairy pods with, the, with different, uh, d the different sizes, usually with some brown or black shades. Usually with some brown or black shades, which can be green, red, or purple, or purple tinted. The pods usually contain three, but usually contain three, but occasionally small, hard, round, ovid shaped seeds. So the seeds are, are as they say, soya beans. So they contain beans, which are round in shape. The seeds are typically rounded to oval with a mass, with a mass differing from about one to 12 to, 200, 12 to 25 kilograms per 100 seeds. The seeds color can be yellow, green, and red. Yellow, green, red, brown, black, slightly malted. Occasionally, bio-color var uh, varieties can also occur from the, color, from the colorless to black. Pale yellow is the most commercial, acceptable. So if you're gonna go into soil production, the seeds they want is the pale yellow commercial acceptable color for soya beans that are intended for human consumption and oil production. The seed contains consists of 70% to 22% of oil, 36 to 40% protein, which serves in developing seeding in the first two weeks of growth. Climate requirements, temperatures. Temperatures are, advi are adversely affected. The yield, your yield is adversely affected by the temperatures. Uh, rise above 30 degrees Celsius. The temperatures below 13 degrees for long periods during flowering stage inhabit, inhabit flowering and formation. So they, in, they, they prevent it. So if it's 13, it's cold. Although 25% can be considered to be overall optimum temperature for all growing stages. So 25 is the best. It can, the soya beans will perform well. 13 Will have a terrible, will have a negative effect on your flowering and your seed formation. Young seedlings are easily damaged by extensive hot weather conditions, very cold 
very uh, very cold very warm temperatures delay flowering and lead to flower abortions so you need to farm in an area where you have perfect weather good amount of heat good amount of cold rainfall requirements rainfall of 500 to 900 millimeters is required for better for be, is required for yields and better seed quality depending on growth conditions because because it's long root system the soy Soya beans can tolerate dry condition prior to flowering, but adequate moisture becomes essential once the buds, once the buds are formed and until the pods are filled. Soya beans are susceptible to drought during, during the flowering and pod, and pod formation stages. They can also do well in warm dry areas under irrigation. Extensive rainfall prior to prior and during flowering can result in can result in um, result in Bad growth and increase logging. Water logging conditions may have a negative effect on the crop. Maximum seed yield is possible where where water is where water is in the root system in the root zone and is kept and is kept about fifty percent. It is kept about fifty percent plant available. So that's how you go for the plant. So not too much, not too little, not too hot, not too dry. Keep it perfect. So keep a balance, a very good balance if you want to be successful. Soil requirements for soya. Deep well drain, deep well drained soil with a fine but firm seed bed that is high in fertility and has a good water holding capacity is needed for good soya bean yield age. Soya beans are generally better adapted to heavy soil and better able to utilize water at lower soil depth than most other crop including maize. Soya beans are better adapted to soil types with a lower pH than other than other legumin crops, but a pH lower than 5.2 impedes a pH lower than 5.2 impedes nitrogen uh, flex, f fluctuation. So you don't want something lower than 5.2. You have to keep it about that. Compacted soil should be avoided because the hypercortal of the soya bean breaks easily during the emergence if under pressure it is preferable to plant in moist soil good seed to soil contact must be ensured the good emergence is critical and the formation of the soil crust at this time should be prevented so the type of soils, not too heavy, not too compacted because it can crack easily. Let's move. Soil preparation. Soil preparation for soya beans must be done throughout to ensure deep, loose seed beds. However, necessary tillage should be avoided. Unnecessary tillage should be avoided because beside being costly, soil must also be protected against loss through wind water, wind water erosion and certain dictates. The uncertain and concerns that dictate that the kind of tillage system, kind of tillage system, and time at which it is utilized. Field layout and design. How do you plant them? The field should be free from water logging, stone, extensive sand, and weeds. The field that, the field that were planted with other bean-like crops in the same year should be avoided. So don't plant, if you've planted ground beans, don't plant the soya bean in there. If the field has steep slope, contours or ridges and waterway channels, sh waterway channels should be constructed. Plant and spacing, plant and space density. Temperatures of about 15 to 18 uh, degrees Celsius have to be reached. The planting date of soya beans is more critical than maize and it has a specific influence on the vegetative growth cause cause of different uh, cause of differences in day in winter and summer plant at late at the late end of december and can still produce sufficient yield age planting space should be about three to five degrees uh, three to five centimeters and the depth should be about two centimeters in clay soil and five centimeters in sandy soil spacing of about 40 to 90 to 90 centimeters 5 to 15 between plants and in rows 200, 250,000 to, 400, to, 4, to 400,000 plants per hectare. Planting on ridges can also increase yieldage. Can also increase yieldage. Three, uh, three, 
300,000 plants a hectare and on an average is recommended under dry climate conditions, but a denser population then is recommended under conditions of relative rainfall. So that is soya bean planting. I know I fumbled a bit there because, hey, I won't lie. Like I said, I'm not a soya bean farmer. I've never farmed soya before. If I give it a go towards the end of this year, this will be the first time. And, um, and if any soya bean or any farmer out there has experimented with soya beans here in Namibia, hit me up in the comment section. Let's get you on the phone. Let's get you on the interview. Let's listen from you so you can share more knowledge rather than the confusion I gave. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say, don't forget to hit the like button. Turn to hit the like button. Hit your subscription button. Turn on your bell notification and hit me up in the comment section. Let's talk a bit. As you know, I'm still in pre-recovery, but I had to make this video. I had to research last night on soya, on soya bean farming and so forth. But if there's anybody out there in Namibia who's doing soya and who's watching this channel, hit me in the comment section. Let's exchange a number so we can get you on the line and you can educate us on soya farming. And probably we can even travel down to your farm and look at your beautiful fields. With, this, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say bye for now. Have yourself a good day.